All right. Uh, in this lesson, what we're going to look at is radicals having to do with variables, or in other words, restrictions uh, having to do with variables and simplifying radicals with variables. Uh, before we do that, let's just investigate some number radical problems um, and ask ourselves if these are possible. First of all, the square root of negative 4 is not possible. I can even show you on the calculator here. If I take the square root of negative 4, uh, it says in an error that I have a non-real answer. The reason for that is because so your answer here is no, it's not possible, and that's because nothing times itself can be negative 4. That is just impossible. Uh, anything times itself will always be positive. Uh, in this next one, the cubed root of negative 8, what you will see uh, is that it is possible to cube root a negative, and let's just see why. I'll investigate it on the calculator. Uh, so the cubed root of negative 8 is negative 2. Uh, because something times itself three times, so this is possible, uh, and that number is negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is equal to negative 8, uh, that is possible to have something times itself uh, three times be negative. Uh, in the next one, the cubed root, or sorry, the fourth root of negative 81, uh, we will see that that is not possible. So the, the fourth root of negative 81, again, you're going to see a non-real answer. And the reason for that is, uh, and should make sense hopefully, that nothing times itself four times will ever be, so that cannot be negative 81. Okay, uh, it's just impossible. And the last one, the fifth root of negative 32, we will see that that is, yes, it's possible. And actually the number that times itself five times is negative 32 uh, will be negative 2. So if I take the fifth root of negative 32, I get negative 2. So that's because, again, negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 uh, times negative 2 times negative 2 is equal to negative 32. So an important thing to notice is if the index, if this wasn't clear during the exercise, if the index is even, so in the case of the first and third problem, if the index is even, the radicand must be even. Uh, positive or equal to zero. So greater than or equal to zero, or in other words, greater than or equal to zero. That has to do with even indexes. So if the index is even, we have to investigate the restrictions carefully because we'll be dealing with uh, variables soon and the possible values of variables. Uh, in the case of odd indexes, what we noticed hopefully is that there are absolutely no restrictions because we can take the odd root of any value, whether it is positive or negative. So uh, in other words, there's no restrictions on the, the variable, which means that it can be all real numbers. Uh, let's look at a few cases with variables now. Uh, so it says simplify and identify restrictions on the variables. My suggestion would be to identify those restrictions before you start any steps. Um, so in the case of the first one, there are going to be absolutely no restrictions on A or B because there is an odd index. So whenever you see an odd index for a particular radical, there's absolutely no restrictions. So in this particular case, as far as your restrictions go, uh, you'll see that A can belong to the set of all real numbers, and so can B. Now to simplify this, we do it exactly like we did with when we were dealing with numbers, and it's actually a little bit easier uh, because A cubed is the same as A times itself three times. So if you wanted to rewrite it like this, you could, and B squared is the same as B times itself twice. With an index of three, you can see that this triplet of A's can come out as a single A, uh, so this will become A cubed root of B squared, and that's your simplest form. Uh, in this next one, what we have is an even index. Uh, so in this particular case, we have to be careful. Uh, you'll notice that x in this case, so any number that we substitute for x, uh, if it's negative, uh, then we'll have a negative product. So the problem here is that x, because of the even index, uh, x has to be greater than or equal to 0. And any number that we substitute in for y, if it's negative, so negative 2 to the fifth or any negative value, we'll make a negative number here. Uh, so because of the even index, y has to be greater than or equal to 0. There's our restrictions. Uh, as far as simplifying goes, uh, much the same as previously. This is x times 5 y's. So you'll see that two pairs of y's can come out. And that will leave us with y squared. So our simplest form is y squared, square root of xy. OK, 
Okay, and this next one, uh, you'll notice that we're going to have to be careful as far as one of our restrictions goes. And that's why I say, uh, think about your restrictions before you simplify. Uh, first of all, we've got an even index here, 4, uh, so we can't have a negative uh, radicand. If we look at the x's here, uh, if x was negative, we would have a negative radicand because a negative to the fifth will be a negative value. So in this case, our restrictions regarding x will be that it has to be greater than or equal to zero. However, if we look at the variable of y, if y is a negative, let's say, for example, y is, I don't know, negative 2. Is negative 2 squared actually a negative value? No. It's positive 4. So any value that we choose for y will still make this a positive um, positive part. Uh, so in this case, there are no restrictions on y, because if y is negative, you still are going to have a positive part of your radicand. So uh, y, as far as your restrictions go, y can actually be any real number. Uh, in this particular case, as far as simplifying it goes, same as we've always done, except for 48, we also want to do a factor tree of that. Uh, 48 is 2 times 24, which is 2 times 12, which is 2 times 6, which is 2 times 3. So you see that this is the fourth root of, and it'll be, I'll make it really long here. Uh, there's four twos, one, two, three, four twos, one, three, five x's, uh, and two y's. So in this case, we can take out groups of four, which is here's a group of four twos, and here's a group of four x's. So that's going to leave us with, in our coefficient, 2x, fourth root of whatever's left inside the radicand, and that's 3xy squared. There is our simplest form. Uh, in this next one, as far as our restrictions go, you'll see in each case of the radicand, if x was negative, uh, we would have a negative radicand, and that is trouble because of the even index of 2. Uh, so in this particular case, our restrictions would be that x has to be greater than or equal to 0. Uh, and then to simplify at the moment, we have no like terms, so you may think that it's in the simplest form possible. However, what you'll notice is that 12, again, uh, can be simplified. 12 is going to be uh, 2 root 3. So in this particular case, if I simplify this, it would be 5 root 3x minus 5. But in this case, maybe I should simplify this and show you. Uh, square root 12x is 2 times 2 times 3 times x. So this pair of 2s comes out as a single 2 and has to multiply with the 5. So it's going to become uh, negative 10 root 3x plus 3 root x. So there's two like terms here. Both of these are like terms because they have the same radicand and same index. Uh, so uh, these two together. 5 root 3x's minus 10 root 3x's is negative 5 root 3x's. And this is not a like term with it, so it's plus 3 root x. That's our simplest form. And our restrictions there are all in red. Uh, in our next example, what we're going to look at, and just two of them, is just going from an entire radical, or from a mixed radical, to an entire radical. So in this particular case, uh, again, let's deal with our restrictions beforehand. Uh, you'll see that because of an even index of 2, this is a square root, uh, and if a was negative, we would have a negative value under the or in the radicand. So in this particular case, again, a has to be greater than or equal to zero. Okay. Uh, finally, regarding making this an entire radical, we have a to the fourth. So we have to put that in as a pair. So that will be uh, a pair of a to the fourths. So in this case, we have 9a, so be the square root of a to the ninth. Uh, in the case of the next one, what we would be doing is, first of all, investigating the restrictions. Since we have an odd uh, index, there's going to be absolutely no restrictions on the variables. So in this case, b can belong to the set of any real numbers. Uh, in order to simplify this, we would have to put 5b in three times. So this is 5b, 5b. 5b. So the simplest form in this case would be the cubed root of, if we look at the number parts, 3 times 5 times 5 times 5 ends up being 375. And the number of b's, there's already a b squared there, and then there's three more, so that would be b to the fifth. So there's our simplest form.